space, not even needing a tower, not even needing a creep wave, and TG, Navi will break the three back first and take for the first time ever their title. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Asus ROG Dream League. We've got two games for you today. Hopefully they're good, because first is going to be Liquid versus Na'Vi. And unfortunately, Liquid aren't able to qualify, but they can mess it up for Na'Vi. We'll talk about that in a little bit, and that's going to be game number one. And next, we're going to see Virtus Pro against Team Liquid. So two Team Liquid games. They don't matter for them, but they can be evil today. And speaking of evil, I'm joined by who am I going to pick? I don't know, all of you. I hate you all. How's it going? How was your day today? Uh, <laughs> okay. It was right. Yeah. That was alright. When did you wake up? Uh, oh, I don't know. Like, uh, shortly after sleeping. That's good. Yeah. That's important. Mm. How are you? How about you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. Got a good night's sleep. Got a good night's sleep. Got my bacon. I'm That's happy. great. I tried to. Sorry, I tried to tame my hair today, and I just Doesn't saw it on work. camera. It just. It's. It's worse than it was pri previously. I have a thingy. Here. That'll do. You go away. Go away, thingy. I look like one of those troll dolls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Not the hair. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm excited for some Dota? Pretty tired, boo. You doing alright? <laughs> you just fine. said you get lots of sleep. Like yeah, but that's yeah. the problem. I slept too much. What? Did that never happen to you? you I'm like a bear, man. The more I sleep, the more powerful I become. Right. <laughs> Is that a bear's work? Handy's on energy drinks. Today. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> I had one on the way here. We'll find out if I drank it too soon after the break. No, I'm kidding. No, literally, yeah. That's yeah. actually like, I mean, that's pretty it's much what's going to happen. when you die. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm like, <laughs> it's not going to be great. Yeah. But it's fine now. Everything's fine. <laughs> you got, you, uh, how, how are you, Lumi? Uh, I am busy farming subs. I planted my seeds get? last night. How would you go? I just watered this morning. I'm going to go back and check. Okay. You might have to borrow yeah. some from me. Are yeah. you guys going to be ready for this? I'm not sure what time you need to start, but is there an optimal starting time for all you guys and your subs on Friday? Whenever, Whenever Andy wakes up. That's yeah, pretty much. Well, the thing is, right, this is the format I want to do. Because I was thinking, like, maybe we should just do, like, a single, like, a bracket with best of threes. But I actually think it would be better if you do a group stage and play each other once in a best of one. So you, you get to switch three teams. You know, like each time you play somebody, you get to bring one of your sub teams and you get free. So you play three okay. games and they're all best of ones. And then afterwards, the first seed plays the fourth seed in singular limb, best of three. And then obviously second plays third, same time, and then goes into the finals. Tense. So you play... That's a lot of things. You play uh, three Maximum best of nine ones. Games. Yeah. So I think you need to start around 5 p.m. CET. Yeah. That's fine with CEST. CEST. Is that that okay? means I'm going to need more Red Bull so I can stay up later yeah. today so I can I, actually wake up. I think wake you'll up. finish around about 1 a.m. But you've got American subs, right? So we can't really have them waking I up. I have like both, yeah. Too early. So. No, you can start with your European and then transition yeah. into American. I'm just American. like, look, whoever's different here, get in there. Right, yeah. yeah, of course. Different okay. metagames. Well, me and Bruno are going to admin it. 
yeah. as well. And we're going to make sure you pick your subs nicely. So who, who's and all in the tournament then? Huh? Who is in the tournament? Like me, you, you? No, no, you Lumi. Lumi, Shane, and Wepas. Wepas. Wepas represent the good studio. Yeah. We might cast a game or two. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. You're going down. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm well, not arguing that. That's going to be Friday. Selfless promotion for all these guys. But also playing in this tournament. <laughs> um, <laughs> least importantly. <laughs> yeah, at least, uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's awful, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go to yesterday. Let's start. Do you have a time machine? It, yes. Ooh, how does it work? <laughs> well, I say <laughs> stuff and then it just follows. Wow. Okay, so more. yesterday we had uh, Team Dog versus Liquid. It was a stompy stomp. Stompity. I mean, TC dying to that Ice Blast pretty much sums up the game for me. There was just no way that a Triline Ember Spear could really do anything. I'm still not sure how I feel about the hero on a Triline in general. I think that it was a lot of Ember needing levels a lot more than people think. And I mean, there was a couple of like pretty big plays here by Demon. Demon was actually really good in this. Yeah, I, his Epi's actually, in my opinion, kept him in the game. But I also feel like there were some questionable Burrow Strikes <laughs> yes. at some point. Uh, when they defend the top, you didn't even use Epicenter. You just and I kept this. calling him way too. Boom. Dead guy. Hmm. Sad. This was the global strat that uh, I guess Dog copy from Virtus Pro, if you want to call it. Copied. I think Rox Kiss did it too, right? No. It was just it was it? Yeah. VP. Yeah. VP? Yeah. So it's Rafe King. No, I mean, I know VP did Rock's it, but I'm saying it without the Rafe King, I think. Did it as well. Andy, yeah. just be wrong. Just let it, let it go. Ah. Let it go. Let it go. I don't know. Don't hold it back anymore. I'm going to cry. Okay. okay. Um, VP went up versus Liquid afterwards. No, they didn't. It was Liquid versus Empire. And. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's been a long seven weeks, man. That's what I'm saying. Lots of liquidity. In this. this is the game that people decided not to wake me up for. Yeah. yeah. I fell asleep on the couch backstage, and I was like, okay, we're going to do something between them while I'll commentate the next game. And then I woke up, and I just heard commentary, and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm Shouldn't supposed I to do this. it was better without you, Andy. Wow. Rude. Yeah. You didn't miss much. No. Resolution was everywhere in the park. TC really tried, but then again, like this lineup didn't favor them that much. There was this whole idea of having a, an aggressive try with the Visage and the Abaddon and just diving with the Weaver, but the fact that they put Shadow Demon and Mirana in mid forced yeah. them to rotate, so... Yeah. It was close on kills, though. That was the only thing they had going. Two, 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 kills. two kill different by the end of it, but yeah, the Luna on the, the side of Empire was just out of control. He died like seven times though, but he just farmed yeah. so well that yeah. it was okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. They did a lot of uh, arrow combinations, if I remember correctly. I was yeah. watching part of the game like in production in back when, uh, mm -hmm. when I actually woke up. But as far as I could tell, it was like Queen of Pain, Weaver, a lot of mobility heroes, but they didn't have anything that could actually stand its ground against the Luna. So like, as soon as it got farm, all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, we, we actually just can't do anything. Even yeah. though we're getting kills, it's like we can't deal with the Luna. Yeah. And it was an important win for Empire because it meant they were going to be joint first in the standings uh, after yesterday. And they're going to be up there with Cloud9, as we discussed. And both of them have a shot at first if they don't drop a game. I'm not sure if they're going to play each other again. They or no, they, no, no, they no, already just played, once, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. And Cloud9 won that one. So they actually have a chance to go joint first. Mm. What happens yeah, then? I, I don't think so, right? Uh, and there's a head-to-head, -head, head, right? Yeah, I which Cloud9 ah, would take yeah. first. Yes. But so I think essentially Empire has to win one more match than Cloud9 does to get first. And Cloud9 right now actually should be 10 and 1 because today our last match is Cloud9 versus Sigma. Well, but let, oh. let's not get ahead of All ourselves. Right. Maybe Sigma revands and comes up with a team in the last next minute. two hours. In the next two hours. Okay. Reband, Kebab, yeah. Quiz League of Legends. Si and Play Sigma Store. are already pretty much forfeited out. And when that gets updated, uh, that will be a zero. 10, 14. and there will be a win for yeah. Meet Your Makers. Oh my god! Meet Your <gasps> Makers will get a da -da -da -da. win. Um, but yeah, today, da -da -da -da. unfortunately, we're not going to get to see that last game, but starting off with Liquid versus Na'Vi, first for Probe versus Liquid. And uh, we should mention that the game against VP and the game against Na'Vi is quite important to both of those teams, more so for Na'Vi, I feel. Oh. Uh, just because it's like, if they lose that game versus Liquid, they become ever so much obtainable to knock out of the top six. Uh, Rock's Kiss are waiting yeah. with only five losses. Uh, Na'Vi have three losses so far, so they can go down to four. And, and Fnatic is also with five uh, losses. Yeah, and well, Fnatic's yeah. with five. So you're pretty much just counting the losses. Right. Um, so if you give Na'Vi a loss a day with a cheeky best of one you know, strat, and Liquid have nothing to lose. Well, they have their last two games of the season as well. Yeah. They are 12 games already, 14 games, that's all you have. 
these last two games because they're not going to be playing later in the tournament. And actually, this is a good moment to point out that after this week, there's going to be a two weeks break mm -hmm. before going back to the final two weeks of the Dream League, which is actually going to be in only one week. Uh, it's going to be a super week. But yeah, the, since DreamHack Bucharest is happening next week, yep. uh, most people from DreamHack won't be here in the studio. Half of the equipment will be... I don't think they will be... More. Yeah, I think they will. I don't know. But I mean, it, it, we can't just show up here and turn on the cameras because we don't know how. Yeah. So we can't we have dream buttons. Man. Yeah, plug it in. Yeah, easy. Monkeys can do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yes. But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so we go away for two weeks. We come back for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then, and then, Saturday, then we Sunday. also do Saturday, Sunday. And there's going to be six games on Saturday and six games on Sunday. So the whole league is going to conclude there. And then, of course, the finals are going to be at DreamHack Summer. Yes. Uh, but before we get to that and before we start introducing the game, we should also mention MVP. This week is going to get announced today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of people have probably already been over to facebook.com forward slash ROG Nordic, which is where you want to go, um, to enter your, fill in your form and enter who your MVP of the week is. And you can take home this uh, motherboard if you're the yeah. lucky one who gets chosen. And people have been winning stuff the whole season. Has anyone told us about it or said, you know, this is really good or tweeted at us or What anything? happens if I take one of these thingies and put it in different pins? Nothing. Oh, these are stuff. plugged in. No. I remember old motherboards had these things where you could change it. Like and reset the CMOS? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The this CMOS. has got like cool plastic to stop I'm, people I'm like me. I'm actually surprised we didn't just steal that because that's Daniel worth only like, did a computer. Oh, yeah. well, I, and I was like... like we, we needed a new PC, right? Yeah. At the house. And by, uh, we've gone through a couple of keyboards. We've got motherboards. We've had graphics cards. We could... Then we could have stole a CPU. We could have totally Frankenstein him a computer. Yeah, we like, could have. Yeah. Pretty sure. But uh, either way, we're, we are completely sorted out. Um, if you want to get in touch with us today, do so on Twitter. Yeah. Um, Twitter question of the cool. day was actually Apparently. something that came out uh, when we were discussing coming back here. We were talking about um, the myths, like what heroes are commonly myth right now. What, what would we say? It's like Naga, Puck. Yeah. Uh, Invoker. Invoker. Shadow Fiend periodically Shadow as well. Shadow Fiend sometimes. And there's like, there's no really good myth heroes. And maybe there's something in the... Meta game just waiting to be picked just because there are so few mid heroes. Well, not not some no good heroes, just that they're not consistently picked. Right. So they're all good. Well, I think that what happens is when things change like this, right, and people start picking things like way back in the day when Magnus was picked mid very frequently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's you, because you could get away with it. It's because Magnus isn't necessarily a super strong laner, but he's right. good enough to the point where he can get enough farm to get the items that he needs, and then his mid game impact is what people wanted him for. I just think that maybe that avenue hasn't been explored enough because Naga is a hero who's picked for the same reason that Magnus is picked, but it's a greedier way to do it. Right. Because you just farm Radiance and then you split push all the lanes and you try to get map control, blah, blah, blah. I just think that there's like unexplored heroes that could be played mid. Well, right. if you have any ideas of unexplored heroes that you would like to see in the metagame, maybe mid, maybe in some other lane, you just go at DH Dream League or hashtag Dream League. You yep. just write, I think Omni Knight should be picked in Gold Solo mid because that would wreck. And I think Andy agrees with that. You um, actually do play Only Night Mid. I yeah, love Only Night, it. man. Okay, all right. Well, we'll get back to that. And uh, you guys should take note, because Friday, you're going to be playing yeah, against I this guy. I already wrote that down. Only so Night Mid. Only Night. Bam. Yeah, but I'm not, are we actually captaining our teams? <laughs> yep. Yes, we yeah. are. Oh, okay. Fair yep. enough. We're making up the rules as we go along, but we decided in the car that it'd be more fun if you actually well, get to they captain can coach. the teams. They can sit in the no, coach. No, because I thought what we were going to do is, like, maybe we draft their teams for them, and then but we play. don't actually play. You have to play, dude. I think it's more fun to play. Yeah, but it's more subs get to play if we don't play. It's fine. Lumi, okay. Lumi doesn't have. <laughs> I, I need, I need to play he to needs make to sure. Play to make sure. Okay. Uh, but we'll talk more about that at the end of the show. Uh, and you guys all need to find a team speak to let your teams on. And get them in a channel each as well. It'd be awesome. Right. They can hang out together and talk tactics. Okay. Uh, the match. Let's get into it. It's going to be Team Liquid against Navi, and we're going to meet the team of Team Liquid. Team Liquid not doing so well recently in the Dream League and outside of it. I mean, it's one of these teams that are trying to find their pace. Demon being there as a new final member is, uh, I think, a good addition. But even though Loomis thinks he's so bad. Uh, Ooh, what? But other than that... <laughs> You've said it numerous times. I think so, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I, I think this is a team that maybe... you got a tattoo, Lumi, of it. Give them 15 more days and they will find their stride. Unfortunately, that seems to be a little bit late for Dream League. Anyways, I, like, against Navi, they have a very tall order. Navi, they just come from winning a... D to CL. So we'll see if this guy yeah, TC can pick the Dragon Knight. So. They beat Cloud9. Yeah, that doesn't mean much. It was 3-1, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I just think like Liquid, 
this is a chance for them to get back on top of their game. There's no pressure from the community in terms of from this league. They've got a, a goal that they're clearly going to work towards, which is like, how are they going to perform at the international? Mm -hmm. And they've got a roster and they need to work hard. And it, for me, it's, it's, you know, pretty much starts now and it starts against the team of Na'Vi. And we'll see what Liquid can do in terms of uh, bring out some strats, because any kind of win, even in the best of one, is going to give them a lot of uh, confidence, I would say, and mm -hmm. at least uh, some motivation to train more and see what they can do. So. Navi, we've got Havost, Dendi, Funik, Papi, and Kurakai. They're looking good. Yeah, Kurakai was since I think day one has kind of been the standout MVP of that day. Yeah. Um, so maybe he he's the week MVP, but you know it's up that to you guys to decide. Oh yeah, he was last he was week last as well. Week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. Havost. I like how they point out that that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Havost. When did that come into? I don't know. It and it's also like Dashkevici. That sounds like. He turns Italian at the end. <laughs> Maybe he does. It's like Daskevich, no, Daskevici, bambino. He does whatever he wants, man. Ma cosa stai parlando? So, Navi, have they seen phased in the Dream League thus far? Because they're not performing amazing. They've dropped three games, but they. Navi is pretty, Navi, man. Yeah. Well, like, Navi is Navi. And they, they're going to like squeak by, then win. And then on LAN, yeah. they're going to just go ham. Like, that's how I always just envision Navi as a team. Pure ham. Just. The like player that bacon. No. I'm looking forward to see today is Funic, because as of late, I feel like Funic hasn't been as good as he used to be. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he was streaming today, man. Okay, he was raging at his teammates. Yeah, he, he was, was streaming really? today, and he went from like 6k down into like 5.8. Yeah, I was okay. watching one game. I guess he was. I think he was playing against Hani, and they had like on the other team it was PL or something, and he just yelled at his Riki because he he reported him for being a Riki picker. <laughs> Oh and they had God. like, he, they had Razor and Riki against the PL, so it's like, okay, we lose late game. But he's just like, you have to make Mjolnir. So it was Riki and Razor with Mjolnir, and they still lost. Do you mm. think it's more to do with the heroes he's playing rather than the. Uh, he's been playing the same offlane heroes, like just. Poke? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that was once he got puck and he had to go. Yeah, the missed multiple coils and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's wrong with Funic, uh, but right now he's playing good enough to be in any team. He's just not playing good enough to be a Navi member. Yeah, but do you, do you also think it's like a lot of what Navi is is Puppy giving the idea of this is what we're playing and this is how we're going to play it. And sometimes as a captain, you might incorporate what you feel is strong in uh -huh. terms of not only the metagame, but also your players. So if you know people are performing really well, as a captain, I'd be like, we're going to focus our efforts around this guy who's constantly performing. Okay. And if Fennec hasn't been performing as well, then maybe he's not getting like the high impact heroes that he could play. You know, for example, Clinks. You know, sure. Fennec Clinks is really good, but Clinks can completely dominate or fall off depending on how the other team play against it in terms of warding. And we haven't seen Fennec play something like a Clinks, right? We've no. seen him play pretty safe heroes. Yeah. So what do you think's up with that? That's a good question. I think Maybe. it's just based on like styles that evolve, right? Like with Navi, they have such a wide array of things that they can do that at, like during any given day, it's usually just puppies saying, "Okay, we're doing this," and everyone else is like, "Okay, fine," you know, and then they do it. So, are they actually having like Funic have any input on what he's playing, or is it just puppy just saying, "Okay, this is what you're playing"? Yeah. Because when we talked to like Dendi before, or basically anyone on LAN, like back DreamHack winner, yeah, yeah, they're it's like, like puppy says, "Puppy this. just says you're playing this," and it's like, "We're playing this," okay. Uh. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Puppy is puppy. He will yeah. always tell people what to do. And uh, yeah. I, I have to admit, like sometimes he he actually does know best. So no, I'm not saying that he doesn't know best. I'm just saying that you know, at any given day, he could decide, okay, let's pick a juggernaut at TI and win <laughs> yeah. with it. And everyone was like, what? But and he was he was way ahead, by the way, with the yeah. Nyx assassin support. Yeah. That didn't work about out. a year ahead. That was it against was like Coddle, ahead. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, against yeah. Coddle as yeah. well. It was like everyone was watching it and going, "It's kind of not working because maybe it's Puppy playing it, but there's moments where it actually is working, but it, they're constantly falling behind because it's not constant pressure from the Knicks. Way yeah. ahead of his time. Puppy I just loved his reasoning for that too, because like Sandra and I were talking about it, and then he walks up and we're like, "Why did you pick Knicks?" He's like, "Oh, Coddle Blast. We just wanted to carry Paisley." Right. And I was like, "Wow, I overthought that." Way too much. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought the Nyx Carapace worked the way it works now. Yeah. Because it used to be that it only blocks the first instance instant of damage. damage. Mm. Yeah. And Instead of one from everyone. Yeah. It yeah. used to last like longer, like five, Four six seconds. Seven. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 
There was a question like that. Uh, we had a question from Mitch Connor. We want to bring this back up. We'll God see what this question it, is. Uh, we'll get the game started as soon as it's uh, in the draft. Uh, I'm not sure if, if they're, uh, why they're delayed, but I have a feeling they are slightly delayed. But Mitch Connor. <sighs> Bruno, do you think your chest <laughs> hair can replace the bare, the bare root animation? Well, I think that's a question for like Anuxi or Bidoto or one of the... You know that's Kalen, right? Oh, is it? That's my friend, yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, Kalen. Mm. Fucking Kalen. Is he a sub? I, I just known him for ages. He is a sub, actually. Oh, he helps he me run my channel. Friday. He's the reason why my chat isn't Capi Pasta all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he's the mod. He's yeah. a good mod. He's a good guy. Yeah. Keep fighting the good fight, guy. Well, he's going to get stomped by Shane's team <laughs> on <laughs> Friday. We'll see. Oh, I'm not letting him play. Oh. If he gets drafted. <laughs> I'm not letting him play. You can't. Okay. You have to random. Oh, That's I do. Random, okay. yeah. Important thing. You okay. have to name your teams. Yeah, you have to name so your rosters teams. So yeah. and then name yes. them. You gotta give them names. You gotta get them on TeamSpeak and a channel each, where they're gonna have to wait. Okay. Me and Bruno might go in and interview them right. at any time. Yeah, during the game. <laughs> Even if we're not streaming, just for our um, amusement. Right. You know, we'll be like, how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> you nervous at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, you gotta name them. We have to create a bracket on uh, some sort of uh, website place. That they have one of those, I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, challenge. Yeah. Um, and what else do we need the subs to do? Oh, they need to subscribe. <laughs> gonna... Well, subs don't need to subscribe. I don't need to to like beg to, for to subs. my channel um, yeah, okay. to play in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and they need to play whatever heroes you're going to give them. But I would recommend asking them in the draft what they can play because you don't want to lose because we shoot you. It's true. So yeah. It's what we've organized. Then you'll get the guy that says, I can only play Ricky and Bounty Hunter. I got him covered. That's fine. Good. You can play those. That's a good lineup. Yeah. Just Bounty Hunter goes with everything. Invisible, invisible. Invincible. Yeah. You're feeling, yeah. you know, the game's not ready, I'm assuming. No, right? it is. No. Oh, I mean, it's, it's we're not in the draft yet, but like somebody's okay. not loading or I something. Mean, I mean, how do you feel? Because you know Wepaz is 5,200 MMR Europe, which is like 6,000 yeah, MMR Yeah, he brings it up America. to me every time we every talk. Every time, He's to like, everyone. Yeah. It's handy. Like 40 MMR away from him, like, all right, man. Good talk. <laughs> I'm not worried about Wepus at all. Like, he may play well for the first two match, but then he's going to yell his team. He's going to die once, he's going to go on tilt, yeah, and then exactly. he's going to lose. Yeah, and then he's like, not speaking anymore. Just I like actually have quiet. different I'm, plans for all of you. Yeah, I'm not worried about Andy either, because I could hear his game plan from my room <laughs> when he plays. <laughs> I'm just worried about Shane, because Shane's like, ah, we're losing, whatever. I will coach him and you'll be okay. Ah, he's I got it. Totally <laughs> he's got like the reckless gameplay, right? Yeah. Like you never know what I he's going to do. I think a lot of Shane's subs, though, don't even play Dota. No. <laughs> just, they just feel just really like bad him. for the <laughs> guy. <laughs> It's mostly so, my mother making more and more yeah. Twitch accounts. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought she could just give me the $5, it'd probably make more sense. Yeah. But but, yeah. um, just before going into the game, I wanted to point <coughs> out that um, Liquid has not beat Navi since November last year. Wow. Yeah, that was like the D12 Season 4, was it? It's a good time to break the trend. Yeah, right they now. lost to them at the Dream League preliminaries. Uh, they lost, which was like last season's Dream League. Uh, they lost in MLG Columbus, they lost at the Dream League Finals uh, at DreamHack Winter, and they lost at D2CL. Hope they're not listening. Just, you know. Wait to rub it in, like. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the time to break the spell, right? Okay, okay, yeah. You can they do Demon it. now. They got Demon. They got Demon. It's all going to be good. Wanna see Demon's stats against Navi? They're probably, sure. not, they're probably not good. Sure, either. we should check this out. <laughs> yeah. oh. But didn't EG used to have that, like, weird, we would beat Navi thing, but lose to everyone else? For like a year? Yeah, I think that was EG. Yeah. Actually. That was yeah. EG, right? EG, yeah. yeah. So maybe he does actually have surprisingly good stats against the team. I guess. Who knows? I can check. We can talk about something else in the meantime. No, no. We're, no, no, we're, we're, okay, we're, we're just in the but game. The internet is slow and stuff. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. You can bring that up in the draft. Okay. We'll send it to the game. Sounds it's going good. to be Liquid versus Na'Vi. Uh, can Liquid do something interesting here and break Na'Vi's chances of getting top six? We'll have to find out as we go into the draft. This is the part where you talk with me. Yeah, welcome to the scrim, guys. This is uh <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep reminding him until eventually he No, gets no, it. no, I do, I do. He's I do like, hey know. Andy, I wanna do this. I'm like, okay, fine. You and were the one that did it originally. Talks. No, I know, but because I want he's like, I need practice. So I'm like, okay. <sighs> you gotta do it to practice, Lumi. I'm practicing, man. Jeez. I just look at myself in the mirror. I'm a uh -huh. motivational I'm thirsty. I like when the game comes on, just nobody gives oh, no it water. In. Oh, bollocks. It's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Navi versus Team Liquid. This is match number one <laughs> of our last day <laughs> of the Dream League. It's Are you hyped? It's not actually I'm the last day. I'm hyped. I got you, Andy. It's not actually the last day. It's just day. okay. You just say exciting things, make it wrong, and it's fine. 
Tell me something about the Lycan and the Ember Spirit. They're OP heroes. OP heroes. If the you pick them in OPR. pubs, I report you. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna I pick report Lycan and Ember Pickers right, like so constantly. My plan for playing against you in this tournament is just have all my guys sit in here and just kill you. It doesn't even matter if we win the match. Once I make you mad, I'm happy. So pretty much every other Truskill game. Basically, whenever I see Shane, I just get mad. I'm just like, I see him and I'm like... <laughs> I shake my fist at him as I walk by. But you have the little smirk. So I know like you're I'm not actually mad. I'm not really. Or am I just always angry? <clears throat> oh, shit. Sure. You won't like him when he's angry. I think we still hear James. La. Yeah, we do. Hi, James. Hello, I'm hey, backstage James. right now. Can you give me some water, James? Yeah, me too. I wouldn't mind some as well, actually. Okay, he only has two hands, boys, and Bruno and I asked first, which means Shane, you're no, right. You can do the try. Yeah. You can do the try. Yeah, that's true. And then you put a couple on top of that. Oh, Quad. that's risky. No, that's he's got like vitamin deficiency, so next man. Level. I'm pretty sure he's got shakes. He's yeah, just he going to drop one of them. Does he really? Yeah, he does. How do you play games if you got the shakes? Uh, He doesn't play Quake anymore for a reason. Jeez. Whoa. Is that why he lost to Wisp in the offline? No, way? I actually think that your sensitivity in Quake is so low that it wouldn't even matter. Oh, yeah, that's uh, actually, that's true. That's why he plays like 200 DPI. <laughs> I see. It's also way, way smoother Jesus. to play FPS games with lower DPI. Okay. None of us are getting water now. No. We've just ruined it. Okay, so... I'll get after the draft. We should, we should maybe talk a little bit about the draft, at least in some sense, you know, because there is a game going on, Shane. Is there? I don't know why I'm directing that towards you, because mm -hmm. I'm the reason I started this tangent anyway, so I'm sorry. It's fine. But we'll I feel like one. I had to deflect I'll, something. I'll take the hit. It's Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Okay, so... I'm sorry, Andy. <laughs> Lycan and Storm for Team Liquid. Navi, they start off with the Ember Spirit and the AA. Storm, obvious counter to Ember. Who would have thought one of the spirits is good against the other? They're actually all good against each other. It's a triangle. Way. Yeah. Is it a triangle? Is it a rock, paper, It's scissor? like rock, paper, scissors. And yeah. I guess rock has to be uh, Earth Spirit, right? Because he's literally okay, a rock. Okay, who's he good against? Uh, he's good against Storm and Ember, actually. <laughs> so it's not a rock, paper, scissors. He's like a, actually the nuke in it. You know, like yeah. those really annoying kids who'd be like, oh, I got a nuclear bomb, and they would just like hit your hand, and you're like, I'm going to hit you in the face. I don't know. If Storm Spirit gets an Orchid, he pretty much shuts down. I think they're good as... against all of the other spirits. Yeah. Well, except Ember. Yeah, like... Ember's not good against either of them. Yeah. Well, no, Ember, I think, is actually good against Earth Spirit if you can get your spells off preemptively. Like, if you can Flame Guard before, yeah, okay. it's still, like, manageable. But if you don't, then I think Storm is good against both of them once you get an Orchid, and Earth Spirit is just good against Storm and Ember even before Orchid, because you have a really, really long silence. I love a certain person right now. She she is like the best. Yes. Thank we, you. She's gonna remain a she though, because I don't think we're allowed to name names. No, but we can like we can actually give an explanation. All I need to do is get my mic close to this. Wait for it. I don't think we can hear it. Well, hopefully people could. Okay. We actually had a waterfall in the studio the other day. Do you remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was raining. <laughs> it was you. All there was was just like a waterfall. Holy cow. You guys are like saviors. I'm so happy right now. Okay, so just looking at the way that the picks have gone so far, uh, Nyx and Doom banned for obvious reasons for Team Liquid. Just straight up storm counters. Not really that fun to play against, especially when you want to be the one to ball in. Um, and Navi don't have any heroes that are really that scary to ball into just yet. Like AA and Ember, sure, you can get Searing Chains, but it doesn't stop you from just balling back out. Unless you get hit by an Ice Blast, I think you're going to be just fine. I don't know. Um, I'm Damn feeling it. like... I'm feeling like Team Liquid's first two picks are still strong. I think maybe even slightly stronger than what Navi have. Do you think picking Storm early, like, is kind of risky though? Because they can just pick heroes day. with lots of lockdown now. Like, they have yeah, the yeah. space. I mean, that, that's always going to be an inherent risk, but... Ember is one of those heroes where I feel like if you don't just directly hard counter it straight away, you're going to have really big issues. Because not having a lockdown for him, I think, arguably is worse than not having a lockdown for a Storm. Because Ember Spirit during the late game, I don't really feel suffers from mana problems. Storm will almost always have mana problems yeah. because of just the way his ultimate works, right? Like you're taking a percentage of your mana plus a flat amount to wherever you try to like be mobile. And sure, if you have like a 10 million charge Bloodstone, maybe it's not so bad, but you will go oom. Like, it's just going to happen. So I think that Ember is that one hero where as long as you're timing your spirits, you basically don't go out of mana unless you're playing recklessly, which most Embers don't. One thing about, like, Sleight of Fist as well is you can you always know where he's going to come back to. So if you're playing Storm Spirit, you can just, like, preemptively head to where he's coming back to and orchid him. I think it's pretty cool. Mm. Yep. Especially uh, Air Shaker's really good against that as well. That's actually what they did yesterday against TC when he played Ember, is they had a Wraith King with a blink, yeah. and he would just blink on top of where the um, the Sleight of Fist Remnant was, and then when he came back, it was just bonk right in the face. Punch, punch. Yeah, I wanted to point out, as someone said on Twitter, I think the name is Tamis or something like that. The Liquid actually beat um, Navi in games 
but not in any series. So February 19, for example, at D2CL, Liquid actually took a game from Navi, which being best of ones, I think it's kind of relevant. But like even in that time, it was a best of three, and they lost the best of three. Yeah. So just but, point it out because okay. someone pointed it out. I just okay. wanted to forward it to you guys. Okay, Rubik. I like Rubik. Rubik. Instant disable. Really important to have. You can steal the wolf form. Yeah, you can steal a wolf form. You can steal a ball lightning as well, which actually is pretty neat to have as a Rubik. You won't be able to use it as well as a storm can because you don't get things like overload, but just having a spell with any kind of mobility, it's the same thing playing against a weaver, right? Yeah. You steal Chikuchi and it's like, oh yeah, I'm like totally unkillable now. It's kind of the same, but I do like it. Plus, I think the telekinesis, as long as you time it just a little bit after a cold feet, you can almost guarantee the cold feet's going to stun. And plus, I think it synergizes well with AA in general. Yeah, you were talking about Dendi playing Ember Spirit. I think this is the first time we've seen him in this league. But you were saying the way he usually rushes BKB, like really early. Yeah. I think that'd be amazing against this team, the good. I think the BKB is both good and bad. It's definitely a little bit better now because Shadow Shaman's picked up by Liquid. So the disable is something that you're going to have to worry about. The only thing about Shadow Shaman is he's really slow. Like, I think he's 285 base move speed, yeah. so he's like a snail. And you have to be pretty darn close for Hex or Shackle. So getting that close to an Ember Spirit, a Shadow Shaman, is going to be tough unless the Storm is initiating for you. I think this is more of just kind of like a cheesy, I'm going to get six on my Shadow Shaman, drop wards in a tower with a Lycan and just kill it. Because right now, Navi, that like their Wave Clear consists of basically Rubik. And uh, Elder Titan actually Whoa. picked up by Navi. This is a pretty low amount of Disable actually coming out from Navi. Yeah, that's actually my primary concern, considering that Storm and Lycan uh, normally requires a lot of Disable. But if you look at the Liquid Bands, they have taken out some of the game's best Disables, uh, especially against both of these heroes. But Navi, one thing does have is the fact that they could burst insanely well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Natural Order is absolutely no joke. So... No joke at no all. No joke. Hashtag like Demon. No joke. Like Demon. So he doesn't find it funny. No. Yeah. So this is uh, this is kind of interesting in that sense. Uh, Team Liquid's gonna pick up a dark here. I the other thing I think Liquid has going for them uh, that Andy mentioned previously. Not only are they good at taking down towers, they're really good at controlling the Roshan pit as well. It's so easy just to drop wards and then just have Lycan in the pit, and then you just have everybody else around to guard it. I mean, what are you gonna do if you're Navi? It's really hard to go into uh, the pit like that. Especially with the Darks here now as well. Like, mm -hmm. think about how you can Tower Siege with that kind of a lineup. You drop a wall, like, you can even drop it behind the tower. It doesn't even matter if they walk into it, because really, Navi don't have any heroes who are that mobile outside of the Ember Spirit. So he's the only one who can reliably engage past the wall. Everyone else has to pretty much go around it. So you can just drop wards, drop a wall, dead tower. Like, yeah. That's really the concern for Navi. So they're going to have to rely pretty heavily on doing well in lanes. Like everything can be changed if your lanes go more than okay for you, right? Yep. Like you get a little bit more farm, maybe you get an earlier mech, then all of a sudden the wards don't seem as bad. So for me, Navi right now, are they going to give Ember to Dendi? Are they going to give it to Havos? Are they going to last pick something else? Uh, I think right now, like they need another ranged hero who can actually attack wards. And they also need somebody who's not necessarily afraid of taking a little bit of damage because Liquid are bringing it in uh, pretty large quantities if you take a fight on their terms. Medusa. Maybe we'll see Navi go back to that solo mid Windrunner and get a safe lane Ember. I mean, I, I see Windrunner being able to beat out Storm quite easily. The counter push is there and we see Navi Dendi the other day farming a quick Hex. Are you sure it's a Storm mid? Because it could be a Lycan mid. It could be. I think if Storm mid just a little bit more... If they think Ember is going mid, then I think it's a Lycan mid. Like okay. for sure. Because Lycan, I think, just straight up beats Ember mid. Yeah. And okay. they're like, we're going to get a ranged hero. It's going to be Mirana. So. Most likely a Volsus hero, I think. Yeah. Pretty mobile. Can transition into some kind of a hard carry. I think he's probably just going to be going for more of like a. You know, we see a lot of the Mjolnir builds lately. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably going to be doing something like that. It's going to be important for Navi to keep their lanes pushed out. And having a hero who can have some kind of nuke potential with Starstorm in conjunction with Telekinesis just to like get the wave out and then you have Spirit Spam as well from the Elder Titan. I think they have sufficient push to stop Liquid from just being able to throw all three lanes into their tower. Because right now you have a Darkseer in one lane, right? And then you have like a Storm and a Shadow Shaman, mm -hmm. all with Spam as well. And then yeah. when they get to a tower, it's really hard to keep it up. So normally when the Mirana is picked, you don't say, oh, this is a lot of stun. But I feel like with this particular lineup, you have Rubik to set it up. Uh, in the mid game, if Elder Titan clumps up or stomps against a clump hero and you were talking about how do you defend against that that push in the base where they wall behind your tower i think if you get a pretty good echo stomp 
you follow up with the arrow and suddenly the game could actually change. Do you not follow up with the Ice Blast? And the Ice Blast on top. So yeah, there, there, there is a ton of kind of long range initiation. Also, let's not forget that there is Moonlight Shadow. So you can set up some pretty good ganks against uh, Team Liquid. Team Liquid's gonna round out the draft by picking up yet another amazing stunner. It's gonna be Bane. Lumi, quick question for you. Uh, Mirana versus Agnes here. Let's assume it's a solo Mirana. How okay. does she do that lane? Well, she traditionally, like, Darkseer is not too good against range carries because, mm -hmm. you know, right, you, yeah. you don't get harassed too much. I think the lane will be fine until Mirana gets phase boots and then the right. harass really gets hard for Darkseer. Question, what happens if Navi decides to go a little bit crazy and go with a Rubik, Ancient Apparition, Elder Titan tri lane? Aggressive. And just put the pressure on whatever it is, like the Storm and Lycan are going to be weak picks. I think it beats whatever lane Liquid can put together, yeah. actually. I That's think it would just straight up beat the lane because, like, Funic is going to do so much damage because of the fact that he's going to be able to hit potentially two to three more heroes with the Spirit, and it does give more damage and move speed for a hero rather than just a regular creep. And then they can just go ham, really. And you I mean, have you're chilling, gonna have chilling touch, on touch on top. Yeah, yeah, and telekinesis. So yeah, it looks like um, that might actually be what they're going to yeah. do. So I think a couple days ago, we had Navi doing something like a roaming carry Marana. I didn't even see that game. So Bruno, how did that one work? I don't think we'll see it here. But no, it was pretty well. It was pretty good because uh, Hubos actually got like quick level three, where he got two points in, well, one, no, um, level four, quick. Mm -hmm. So he had two points in Starfall, one in Leap and one in Arrow. And then he just gave up the lane to the support. So the supports, there was one support that needed some kind of farm, let's say something like an X. Wasn't an X, but something like an X, mm -hmm. or Bane. And he just roamed and killed mid, and killed the offlane, and killed mid again. I went back to his lane and killed a little bit more. And um, that's the thing about Mirana. She's a carry, not the hard carry, but she also has a lot of nuking potential early game. So you can play her as a roamer, and if you're going to get the kills, one, well, then you're doing a good job. Okay. So it looks like uh, Navi smoke into the enemy jungle trying to pick off one, but uh, Team Liquid not going to fall for it. Funic I like that they tried that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Funic has like no regen. What's up with that? He only has one tango. He just, he's not going to get hit ever? Is that his game plan? Well, I mean, Shadow Shaman is not known necessarily as like the best lane support. Although I suppose with a Lycan Howl, if you do get shackled, I think you just die, mm -hmm. actually. So he, he figures he doesn't need the regen. Well, actually, I think if Shadow Shaman clicks on uh, the Elder Titan and sees that he only has one Tango, I would just spam my Ether Shock, my entire mana pool. Yeah. Ether Shock, Ether Shock, Ether Shock, because you don't have a self. Like, that is the best zoning, I think. Obviously, Elder Titan, unlike most other offlane, doesn't really have to get in there. You could just spam his spirit and just get farm. But yeah. Alright. And Storm Spirit against Ember Spirit. I think Storm Spirit wins every time, yeah. Yeah, pretty handedly. I mean, it's not terrible for the Ember, but Ember actually doesn't just straight up beat that many heroes mid. I think any hero that does any significant amount of harass damage just by right clicks is going to be hard for Ember because his base armor is pretty bad for an agility hero. And he doesn't really have any method of harass until he gets at least two points in the Searing Chains. Mm -hmm. Like personally, I wouldn't use level two, or uh, yeah, level two because you basically have one slight, one chain. I think you want level three or four minimum before you start. But yeah, there he goes. He just does it anyway. But he doesn't have his bottle yet, so I think it's fine because he's going to get his bottle and like three more creeps. So he'll bottle back up to full, and then he'll potentially get the two-minute rune. Okay. Why did he start with the Slide of Fist first instead of the Searing Chains? Probably just wanted one or two last hit under the tower. You definitely could use it as a last well, hit. Well, it does half damage. It does creeps. like two damage. Yeah, I, but think you know, it's, I think it's more to prevent harass than it is to like, like, uh, dodge remnants and stuff. Yeah. You know, sometimes like there's one one hit you can't do because your attack animation is so slow. You yeah, slide, I, I slide of Fist it for, for the last hit. But his Slight would actually do like, like 20 damage. Yeah, it wouldn't do much. And the Creeps have two armor as well, so it's probably like... <laughs> Well, two armor is what, like 13% damage reduction? It's like nothing. Let's see. Oh, yeah. it's eight. It's that's, even less. One, that's one armor. Oh, one armor, yeah. Okay, so. I think the important thing to point out is that they're doing a very good job keeping on Boba on the bot lane. Like, unless he gets level two, or until he gets level two, Boba has to really live in constant fear. And even if he has level two, you could let him surge first and then lift. And that will mostly get the kill. So, Boba, this is a very, very tough lane for him. So Invisoring's gonna get picked up by Puppy. Don't think they can actually set up a kill here. Uh, chilling Touch. Yeah, got Chilling Touch. Chains. If Quickfa's not full health, it could be a little bit dangerous for him. Dandy's just full mana as oh, well. Oh, he's got Cold Feet as well. Yeah. I mean, if he chain and body blocks, 
This is hard, though, because there's a lot of creeps here. Well, oh, no. he wants to go for it. He's making it quite obvious, though. I don't think Quakefa's going to die now. I think he realized, like, just by walking that far forward that he knows that somebody's there. Because, I mean, you don't walk that far up when you have when you don't have creep equilibrium, right? Like, yep. Yeah, yeah. When your lane's pushing in, if you walk up like that, it's like, okay, there's somebody here. At the same time, if you're a mid player that plays aggressive all the time... Uh, yeah, but in that matchup, I don't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that sentry ward in the jungle? Yeah. Just as... Uh, Oh, he's gonna run back in. Here comes the Kofi. The chilling touches on top. Unfortunately, chain or side of fist has already been used, so not much chasing damage. A little bit of harass. Bit of goof. Dendi is not doing that bad though. Just like the presence of Puppy being around is allowing Dendi to stay consistent uh, in overall CS with Quakefa, which I think is fine. The uh, difference I think between these two heroes is that Quakefa is going to have a bit of an easier time having mid game impact just because of the way that his hero functions. Whereas Dendi, I think, is going to. Like, his whole team is basically going to be helping him. Yeah. Whereas Quakefa, I think, has to help make room for his team. I think Puppy is doing an excellent job, though. Not only did he uh, you know, help mid, he also blocked the camp, which is going to make Darkseer's life a lot more difficult. Darkseer is already forced to the jungle, but his supports can actually stack for him. So, you know, I think Boba is going to have a very low impact game, unfortunately for me, because I'm counting him on fantasy points. Demon actually, like, was stacking, and while he was running away to pull the creep, uh, Puppy, like, lamped the sentry ward in and stopped it. It was pretty funny. Yep. What a guy. Funnex already got a soul ring too. I'm like I'm that. surprised that Team Liquid was able to allow him to do that. He had one tangle. He used the spirit and got like a good few uh, yeah. last hits when they pulled. And you can't really stop him from pulling the side camp either unless you have a dedicated support just sitting there, yeah. just standing in the way of the neutrals because the spirit will pull the creeps towards the lane, right? Just like a normal pull. Mm -hmm. So it's actually pretty easy to abuse Elder Titan offlane in terms of experience and gold gain. Well, it looks like uh, Team Liquid's actually going to just get mostly the last hits, which is actually a ton of gold here for uh, at least TC. I imagine TC's going to get insanely farmed. Yeah, he actually has flats finish four minutes in. That's actually pretty insane. And they can yeah. put a lot of pressure on that tier one. Speaking of tier one, bottom lane is getting pressure, and uh, Boba can't be there to defend that. So, free tower here for uh, Team Navi. I'm really happy that TC is playing Lycan, because he usually plays like the not so mobile carries, and Lycan can go pretty ham as far as carries go, especially with a team that doesn't have that much lockdown. I'm interested to see if they can actually get this tier one. Because even with Howl, since the tier one died so much faster for Navi, they can pretty much just put their two supports up here with Funnik and say, yeah, this is fine. Like Puppy and Kuro can stay nearby or just rotate wherever they want now because that tower is no longer there. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the strengths that killing the offline tower first has always had, just frees up your supports to do pretty much whatever. So the fact that it's died so soon, now it's like Quakefa has to play more passive because he only has vision of the top rune and just... A lot of things can happen basically with an Ember Spirit as well. Who's you, going this build? It's very strange that no one's rotating bottom attack. from Liquid to like soak up all this experience. Because they know. Well, oh, they Dark Seer is now going there slowly. The problem is that normally when you're pushing a tier 1 tower, like you have a melee carry being left behind, like an anti mage or a PL or whatever. But Murano with Phase Boots, he could or she could definitely zone out a, a Boba. I think Boba, if he's not careful enough, he's going to get killed. Mid lane here. Here comes a lift as well as a chain against Koifa. Koifa just lifts out, but. Dendi was able to get the kill, I think, through the second proc of that this chain? This Searing Chains, yeah. yeah. That damage. And yeah, first blood for Dendi. The Courier level seven seven as the well. room as well. Cheeky ninja. That's what you did in our 1v1, you're scouting runes with feckin' chickens. I mean, you say it like it's a bad thing to do. I thought we were gentlemen here. What? <laughs> man, I'm getting, going for the Play w, to win, man. man. Play to win. <laughs> yeah. Leap here on the bot lane. It's going to be a chain slowing down Boba. Boba is going to take a double star storm proc. Yep. Easy kill. And that's exactly what I mean about Marana. Once she gets a face boots, her damage actually just goes up the roof. Interesting build coming out from Marana, though. Kind of uh, Not that interesting. Arrow. I mean, I think you should max star storm by seven, to be honest. Well, I think if you have Searing Chain set up, it's pretty reliable that you're going to be able to get an arrow. I mean, Searing Chains is three seconds, so if you can't land an arrow in three seconds, that arrow is not landing, you know what I mean? So I think that it's actually fine. The Double Star Storm is one question that you could kind of raise and say, okay, yeah, the Double Star Storm would actually just flat out deal more damage. Mm -hmm. But do you really want to be that close to Liquid's team? Well, I think more so for, for the laning. Right. Like, we saw him leap in, Double Star Storm is guaranteed almost, and then you just right-click him down to death. But yeah, eventually, Marana is definitely going to have both spell max, so it's, you know, not, not too big a deal. Liquid Koifa running in. He's so close. The invis re reveals from Kuroki. 
He's got Sage's mask on top of Vlad's. I guess he's getting Medallion. Yeah, yeah. Medallion's really legit when you're trying to kill Roshan pretty early on into the game. It's, it gives you lots of damage against people as well. Like, it's kind of... Yeah. Minus armor is ridiculous early game. Yeah, they definitely need to actually kill that Roshan because if you look at Tower, uh, even though there was a four minute Vlad's, they didn't get anything beyond that. So, Tower pretty much defended. Funny getting a lot of experience for an offlane. Orcs has got a DD. Yeah, but can he actually do anything with it is the question. I'm surprised he... Well, I thought he could have gone Kuroki, but, you know, Dendi is nearby. There is Lift as a defensive measure. I didn't really think about this before, but... If you kill the offlane tower in the mid on the opposite team is basically the space creator and that tower is already dead, you have a way harder time ganking lanes because yeah. if supports are consistently moving around, you never really know exactly where everybody is. Mm -hmm. So as a hero like Storm, who's either an initiator or like a I'm going to pick you off type of hero, it's way harder to do your job if the offlane tier one tower dies that fast. Because all of a sudden you have to worry about two heroes that you're trying to go into or three instead of just one. And Kuro also manages to get his hands on Ball Lightning, so now matters are even worse because he can just do this. Go in, Telekinesis, they're going to go for the burst, and he's going to throw all three spirits out immediately. The arrow, unfortunately, going to be off the mark, and Quakeful will manage to live through it. TP coming in. It's going to be Bulba. It's not really going to be able to kill anyone, but still. It's also pretty hard when they have no... Ooh, they got a Hex on Dendi. War Trap coming in, but there's no enough mana for Shackle, or at least a little bit out of range. That's at least... Okay, deep... Okay. The more important thing is that right now it's basically 300 gold given up for that misplay. Yeah, and now Havos is just farming the words, man. He's like, thanks for the money, man. TC's Big actually going to stray and go in the Roshan pit. I but guess. there's no vision on the map at all from anyone. Those are zoning wards, man. Yeah, I, I suppose. Keep Havos Pretty busy. expensive zoning ward, though. Yeah, I mean, he's actually going to farm every single one of them. So that's oh, quite a bit of money. He left two. Yeah, like, uh, keep the change. <laughs> <laughs> it, was bait, it was a bait, man. It was a bait. Yeah, I think what they need to do is give Boba and TC all of this experience. Boba needs to catch up. He's got boots and soaring, and that's it. Yeah, he is leeching it though. So, yeah. Ow. it's actually quite good for Liquid that the Shadow Shaman has already managed to hit level six. I mean, granted, he did waste his wards, but it wasn't a waste in the sense that it stopped Navi from just being in the vicinity. Yeah, like sure, Havos like lost what fifty percent of his life just killing the wards, mm -hmm. so he can't go in. Funix obviously in the offlane, and even if he TPs, it's going to be really obvious that TC can just walk away. So they get Roshan, which is definitely something to Liquid's credit. I just feel as though Quakefa is just having such a hard time in this game. Like, there's nowhere really for him to go reliably unless he has, like, four or, like, three members of his team behind him. And Kuroki and Puppy are kind of nearly always off the map, which kind of scares the crap out of you if you're trying to farm as well. It looks like we're going to see a smoke end coming out from Team Liquid on the bottom. They're going to have way to lead a charge. He's going to have the most reliable initiation. Well, maybe you want to ha have your Hexer in the front, but Shadow Shaman is so slow. I think Navi's actually aware of this, though. Kuroki's standing behind the trees of this tier 1. I think Fiend's Grip is longer than Hex. Yeah, Fiend's Grip... Well... I've seen thing. like 1200 range yeah. Fiend's Grip, so Ooh. they're going to spot out Dendi. Are they going to be able to get the grip in time? That's what I'm talking about, that <laughs> 1000 range. Here comes the ball in from Kuro, he has it stolen still. He's going to be able to stop the grip. Puppy though, going to get bursted down. Wards drop behind the tower. Kuro getting shackled on the right hand side of the yes, tower. Dendi though, doing damage with the spirits. Manages to get a kill. Quick in the meantime, picks up a double, taking out Kuro. Teleport reaction now from Funic. He's going to throw out a spirit. Is it actually fast enough to catch TC? I believe he still has the Aegis. No, he way wants too, way too. Way it's too. so close. I don't actually think he's going to be able to get him. Aegis going to be popped now on TC. Arrow going to be off the mark on Quakefoot. He balls to the low ground. Dendi just on the chase, does not want to give up. Has another chance if he wants to use it. TC and Bulba in the back, doing a bit of damage to fun at Quakefoot. Now completely out of mana. Havos quite low as well. This is just the most insane, drawn out team fight. <laughs> Dendi gets another kill. Now Havos on the run Whoa. from some wolves. TC now wants to leave, and I think Dendi is going to find yet another kill. It's going to be on way too. He's got a spirit up, but he has no TP and no mana. Is he going to be able to get away from this one? I, don't I doubt think it. So. Yeah, he's going to have Medallion he's back up. Fine. He's actually pretty yeah, fast here with yeah. the drums as well as face, and yeah, they're going to give up the chase. And he gets a regen. <laughs> There's Surge back on. I'm surprised they gave it up. Oh my god, he really is going to get a regen. I mean, that team fight really showcased the fact that there's oh, that's oh, so ice blast. demoralizing. Coming to the bot lane, I think they're going to go on him if TC he stays despite being hit. No, he's gonna back off. Yeah, that team fight really showcased that one of the spirits is able to fight with low mana, and the other spirit is just useless yeah. without mana. It was also Kuroki uh, ball lightning in and stopping the Fiend's grip like so early. 
and stealing it as well. Like having that stolen still makes it so hard for Waitu to do his job. Yeah. Right? And that's another point that we didn't really bring up before is there are two heroes on Liquid that in order to disable, they have to basically be standing still. So that's really easy to line up arrows if you're Havoist. It's really easy to be able to telekinesis or steal the spells in general, like being able to steal Fiend's Grip. Bot lane, they want Dendi, but there's no stuns whatsoever. So they're yeah, not they, getting they top, really can't. They are going to start a grip here on Funic. They do have the first time to actually bring him down. Ice Blast is coming, coming up, and so will Dendi. Dendi, is he going to go in? He sees Koi Fire. It's a two-man stun. Way too is basically dead. Drum's going to get activated. He's not going to chase for more. The Koi Fire is quite low as well. Yeah, but the Ice Blast effect finally wore off, so he's not going to be able to get that kill even if he wanted to dive, and Demon's sitting here mid. And they denied the mid tower, Radiant's so tower those wards that were dropped attack. earlier, kind of like the, the zoning wards, I guess you could say, Yeah. didn't really get quite what they wanted to. I'm, I mean, the tower going down is still good. Radiant's TC, in the meantime, manages to secure the uh, safe lane tier 1. But the map control, I think, is more important, right? Like, denying yeah. the tower is fine if you're Navi. It's just gold that Liquid otherwise would have gotten anyway. Just being able to get the map control, though, I think is what Liquid really needs. Kroki's loving this ball lightning right now. Yeah, he, he re-steals it. Just make sure that he has it again. I'm really surprised. Normally, Storms who play against Rubik just spam remnants, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll farm the woods or something, or they'll just ball and just remnant out of habit. Because you can't steal at mid-ball, because you can't be targeted. Yeah. So, I'm just surprised that he's actually allowed it to happen so many times. Definitely not good for Liquid. Giving the remnant away. And every time we see Kuroki remnant, there's just like red dots. Red X's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, yeah that's, how, crazy. that's really weird. Oh, fighting time. Oh, arrow gonna follow up. Mech gonna be used. Bulba though, gonna get Bursa down. Ice Blast is gonna hit on two. Demon Ooh. gonna be the next to drop to the cold feet, but De or Dendi actually picks up a double somehow. How did he get both Dude, of those kills? The Flame Guard is level three. He's yeah. level. 11. He had chain on both of those heroes, so I guess that damage... No, the chain hit on the I creep. thought the cold feet for sure was going to get the kill. Okay. Or one of the kills, but I guess not. Dendi just manages to get them both. Yeah, they really need uh, their Lycan to be in these fights. Unfortunately, he was farming in the jungle. Here comes a tier 1 push. That should be free as well. The chilling touch with Slider Fist combo is pretty filthy as well. Dyer's middle tower like you always get that bonus damage. And it only uses one charge of it as well. I think it's pretty good, but I don't think it's as good as people hype it up to be. Because, I mean, it's only really good if you have multiple sources of damage going on one target, right? Like okay. you think Meepo with yeah. Chilling Touch, because it's like five or four Meepos hitting the same guy. Then it's good. But if it's just one Cold Feet hit on a bunch of different heroes, it's actually like, it's still a decent amount of damage to the whole team. But what, it's like 80 more? Yeah. You can stack uh, camps with it and kill neutrals with it though. Which is pretty hard without a Battle Fury to kill them on Ember. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it only counts as one hit. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So I guess it is quite good. Havos, he's invisible, man. He smells blood. Well, he wants the arrow. Wait, he's gonna just go in. The, okay. the ulti wears off, so he's gonna get spotted out. Took his camp, though. Yeah, a bit of farm. Thanks for the gold. What a, sometimes when I'm in the enemy jungle, I uh, like kill the big creeps and leave the small ones. <laughs> do you think that's a, a decent thing to do? or? Yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah. Because you're basically saying you have to spend your time to kill a creep that's worth at most, like what, most, like 25 gold, right? Sometimes the big ones are like 30 or 40. Well, the Ursas, I think, are. Yeah. But if you just leave like a mini centaur or something, then it's pretty annoying. Oh, they traded a tier 1 for a tier 2. I'm surprised, actually, that Demon dropped his wards for this. They could have gone high ground, do you think? I mean, maybe well, not, but you could save it for I whatever you I think they could have, actually. Yeah. Because if you're not V, you don't want to fight with Mass Servant wards down, and you're already like three to four people top. So if you just TP without getting the tower, it's more like you're wasting your time. Because they could very easily just drop the wards Top when lane. you're TPing. Yeah. They're going to be able to find Havos. He might be able to leap away from this. Nope. Teleport Hex coming in from Demon. Dendi, he's going to go in for Demon. He wants the kill. Will be able to find it. Koikfa almost completely out of mana again. And Dendi, instead of going for the uh, typical BKB, is actually just opting to go for a Deso. So maybe he feels he doesn't need the magic immunity. Dendi's still up here. Ice Blast can head on Koikfa. Does he want to go deep? Looks like he doesn't. Which is good because way too had grip. That would have been a really sad ember. <laughs> Mid lane, looks like they are going to spot out Kuroki. Kuroki can, can steal, steal Shapeshift and just run. Yeah, go, it's going to do go. it right there, so Kuroki is going to play with these two. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Neither to how. Yeah, how? At how? Uh, it would have been hilarious if they were chasing each other around for a while. I've actually seen that happen way too many times. <laughs> I'll catch you. No, I'll catch you. Like the mini wolf. I yeah, mean, yeah. you're so used to like, oh, I'm I'm shape shift. I'm gonna just right click anybody now. Yeah. Except when they're searched. 
I gotta say though, Navi are being very proactive about just applying pressure everywhere. Just having Dendi so far ahead helps them significantly because he's actually almost guaranteed killing supports now. Mm -hmm. And once he finishes his Desolator, it's going to get even worse. Since he doesn't have to fully commit to a fight right now, he can just use Sleight of Fist with a Deso at like probably 18, 19 minutes in. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shadow Shaman and Bane, they're not going to be able to really deal with that kind of damage. And then you have an Ice Blast to follow it up. There's just so much AoE that they have to deal with that the supports just can't stay in the fight. And the natural order, removing all their armor as well. Yeah. So, so it's even negative armor on top of that. Like the way that they're dealing with this, the push potential of Liquid is just stopping it before it can even start. I think what Liquid needs to do is just keep farming to their Orchids and then just have the Storm to pick off Mirana or basically just about anybody else. Um, maybe they can't kill the Elder Titan because he's got the mech. But I think everybody else, uh, quite fucking solo. So. What is Demon up to here? Demon is stacking the camp by using Mass Urban Wards to farm it. They do use Splash Damage. So and it's not the, the best use of the wards, but it's actually not too bad. I've well, actually experimented using level 11 wards and just stacking a four stack ancients. It'll take you a while. But oh, you Demon, no! Oh my god. Oh boy. So that's how you not do this. But uh, uh, if you do want to use your level 11 Mass Urban wards for three four stack ancients, it's, it's okay. He got the Blink Dagger though, so it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I think the Blink is actually pretty huge. Like, yeah. granted, probably shouldn't die to neutrals. He didn't really lose any money, I guess. So it doesn't matter that much. But hey, he's, he's, free trip to the base, right? I don't know if he did it on purpose. But we'll give no. him the benefit of it, though. He did not do it on purpose. I mean, there was a dragon inside. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's all right. It's fine. But nothing has Blink. If he can manage to catch out Dendi, just having like the one hero go in first allows Quakefoot to go in. And then if you can even just go for a Hex maybe on Kuro instead, that way you know there's no a Telekinesis going out onto your Storm when he balls yeah. into the Ember. So there's basically two targets I think that Demon could go for. Either one I think is perfectly viable. My, my biggest concern though is that Liquid basically have to get, kill a hero extremely fast. Because if they don't, they're going to have to deal with Ice Blast, they're going to have to deal with Dendi throwing out a Sleight of Fist or Flame Guard damage. There's actually a lot of like spammy abilities that Navi have yeah. that you really oh, don't want to have to Kodfa deal with. has the Orchid up. Yeah, he's not going to defend. This tower is going to be given up. Meanwhile, it looks like it's going to be Team Liquid trying to threaten the racks on the bottom lane. They don't have the Master Serpent Ward here, so it's basically they're just pushing for space. I'm not sure if I understand this move. Well, I think the push from Liquid is fine because the way, the way that you stop Navi is being at their base before they're at your base. Yeah. And they don't know where Demon is. Like, Demon's been out of sight, so they don't actually know if Demon was down here or not. Maybe they can assume well, that Demon he was going to be, be sitting here. towards middle. When my shadow gonna walk past those wards, Sentry's gonna get dropped down, so they should see Kuroki running by. Oh, they didn't see it. Okay, they see them now. They see them now. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be able to regroup just fine. They're kind of split up, though, Liquid. Yeah, they're actually cut in yeah. half, basically. I mean, Way 2 and TC are bottom, which I think is fine, because all the wards, actually, from Liquid are aggressive wards, so they can see the entirety of Navi's jungle. So they're gonna know basically, as soon as they come across the map. And since there's sentries basically in the one spot that you would essentially have to walk through unless you're teleporting back to the base, which even then, like, they're still positioned well for it. I mean, Demon's actually just drawing a lot of attention up top, so the wolves are slowly pushing on the bottom. Yeah, he's but I think they saw terror. him. He's so... He's gonna die. He's got Blink. That terror might die, though. It's that ward saw him, so if he gets Sleight of Fisted, he's dead. Oh. Unless he can get like a hex off. Oh, never mind. He sees Dendi. So Demon's gonna, gonna blink and just go for the wards and straight up TP. Can he actually make it out? He will make it Ooh. out. That's two, three T. But Everybody's drawn. So Roshan is happening right now. Yeah. That was you know actually what? really good. Yeah, that was, was a really good play. I mean, sure, they farm the wards, but I mean, Liquid get Roshan now for free. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think Liquid was gonna get the Roshan regardless. But, well, uh, maybe. I think the way that Navi were positioned, it would have actually been relatively difficult for Liquid to fight it. But they're going to give the Aegis to Quakefa instead, which I think is the right call yeah. in this case. you got to give your Aegis to your Initiator, because Storm, in my opinion, is like one of the best Aegis carriers in the game. Just period. Yeah. Because you can get in and out of fights so effectively with that hero. He also uses both his mana and HP like really quickly, whereas like yeah. a, a lot of heroes don't benefit from full mana as much as he would. Don't give an Aegis to a Wraith King with like a full inventory, man. I hate that. Like He just dies like two times, and it's yeah. like, okay, now what? Well, the problem actually is that your whole team dies. Puppy, yeah, exactly. You die. and you're just standing there on your oh, own. Oh, puppy. Orchid. There's the. Man, those poles are so weird. 
Like, he just got pulled from, what, like, 500 range? I thought how it works is, like, <laughs> if that hero's ever in range, when you cash a pull, and when they walks out, the yeah. animation just follows. It's the same with Fiends, Oh, bro. Dendi, he's gonna get crit, gonna be forced to go to his remnant. The damage they actually managed to kill TC. Does he have another remnant then, so he can keep I think he kind of got baited by doing a lot of damage to Dendi there. I think he felt a little bit greedy and then wanted to go for the kill. He's a wolf, he could probably taste the blood. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, tower at top is gonna get denied, I think. The range creep. Go on, range creep. Ah, uh, not enough oh. damage. It hits for four, man. Four damage. Piercing. Piercing not good against fortified, man. Come on, let me. I don't know this. if I don't know if the Warcraft three thing. So no, it is. Ooh. It's in the game. That's it, what it's based off of. It's in the game. Phoenix down for Ghost Scepter. It's really good against the uh, Liquid, actually, because they have like Shadow Shaman Ward, like, and yeah. Storm Spirit does a lot of right click damage as well. I think Phonic's actually relatively safe, though, in this lineup. I think he's one of the lowest priority targets. Because killing the Elder Titan is nice, but he's actually pretty tanky as a hero. I am, I'm, I don't like the Ghost Scepter. Like, with the mech alone, I think he's going to be fine. You, you just don't think he's going to be targeted that much? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's mostly going to stay back with his range, right? Yeah. So. Well, he has to get in to heal everyone now. No, it's 750 AoE, man. I think it's more that in a lot of lineups, Elder Titan is definitely somebody that you want to kill early, but you just can't afford to focus him because he's extremely fast. And if you focus him, then you have Ember, like Dendi and Havos, just running rampant in a team fight, right? Yep. Mm. And I mean, killing the AA or the Rubik is nice, but Puppy's probably going to get his ult off no matter what. And the same thing can be said for Kuro. Like, he's going to use his spells. If you're Liquid here, what do you do with this Aegis? What's like push a tower? Go high ground? I would try to go for a tier 2, or maybe just even finish the tier 1 in the offlane. Or is it actually getting denied right now? No, it's not. No. It's still out of range. Okay, 7 so, more life. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess Liquid either want to farm it out a little bit more, maybe wait for TC to get his BKB. Oh, TC's back doing his tier 1. Yeah. They should be able to at least put it in deny range, or just flat out kill it. The Necro Creep's doing a lot of damage with hell. Oh wow, he actually gets it! Yeah. Nice. How oh, Necro, no joke. That damage. It's so scary when you're an agility carry and you kill the Necro Creeps. They do so much damage. Yeah, so they only have three minutes left on Aegis. If they were going to go for a tier two, I would say do it now. Well, they have to wait for Necro Books to come back up. So I think they might use it on the last like 30 seconds. They got so. wards though, like Serpent Wards. I, I guess. Maybe they're Is just Demon waiting for a yet? pick. Nope, he's 10. All right, so he's not 11. Bummer. Even though he did suck Ancients. I mean, he was playing hard support, right? Or no, I think he plays four. Yeah, it's yeah way four. Two and way two plays five. Oh yeah, way two's <laughs> definitely five. The boots. But way two's got blink as well. If you look at him, two dogs and gold and bank. Maybe it's actually not too bad. Is He's he going for a necro it. book? Maybe instead. Oh, Ooh, the hex! What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That, that hex range. I didn't know chickens could fly. Apparently they can. Now in Dota two, flying chickens. I mean. Mirana used to be that when you're leaping, you're invulnerable. Yeah. But they changed that like a while back. So you could actually hit somebody when they're leaping. So the yeah, you, 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 your leap can actually just get interrupted. Yeah. Like if you get stunned or something. Slark. Oh, yeah. oh my god. That's like the worst feeling in the world. It you really just get is. pounced and you're like, uh. Quite fun. Oh, if that slight of fist hit, that would have been Aegis. I think he's just going to go for it. Yeah. Oh, wow, that freaking Why didn't he just use all of his mana to get out? He was buying his BKB. Got him. Got the BKB. Well, I mean, his Aegis is going to be going down anyway. Realistically, that Aegis wasn't going to be put to use, so I don't think Quakefit really cares. Yeah. Quakefit doesn't care. Double damage. I think that Navi want to get the next Roshan, though, because that's going to be Cheese. Mm -hmm. And if they give that away as well, it's just like letting Liquid stay in the game longer, in my opinion. I think if they got next Roshan, they could potentially just go high ground. Oh, sure, it's gonna be Hook tough. Going oh, they're gonna go in for Dendi. BKB gonna be popped. Dendi could be going down here. Quite oh. low on HP. We'll go down. That's 1100 gold to Quick, but he wants more. He's going for Puppy. He's gonna get more auto attacks off. He needs to get one more to kill, oh, him, but no, Puppy goes invis, and they're gonna find Kuroki as well. Two really big kills here for Liquid. Quickfoot does not. Doesn't care, man. It was does, awesome. Does not care. I was just gonna say that I, I wasn't impressed with the way that Liquid used their Aegis. They had a, such a good advantage, but they didn't u press it for anything. I think they were waiting for a mistake, but it seems like Koifa is just waiting for that BKP because he re recognized once he has it, 
Nothing could actually stop him from just going in like he just did. You see the weakness of Ember Spirit. If he gets silenced, he's just like... <laughs> well, at the same time, Vanek was close enough to drop his mech, but I think it came right after after Dendi died. If the mech came off, Dendi would have survived. So that, that play that Koifa made would not have worked. Well, I don't it might not have killed Dendi, but he wouldn't have died either. Like, actually, even with mech, I think he still would have killed yeah, him. No, no, he definitely would have killed uh, Dendi, but he would have taken him much longer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The Orchid hadn't popped when he died as well, though. That's 30% damage or whatever. Yeah, it was close, I think. I don't know if it actually killed him, or if it hadn't gone off and it would have killed him anyway. Quicker's gonna find a haste rune. He's like the shining hope right now, besides TC of Liquid. And if you look at the cores, like an overall net worth, it's like Lycan and Storm are second and third highest. So, it's not like they're getting massively out-farmed. It's more just like... Navi have been applying a lot of pressure, and Liquid haven't had the majority of map control, I would say, for a little while. But they're still finding room. So it's not as if Liquid are out of the game, they just need to make sure that they, like, once Demon hits maybe 11, maybe they can start trying to go for the tier 2s. He's only like 1.9k away from Agonins as well, Demon. He is really rich. Yeah. Even though he's 0, 4, 5. I actually think at this point Liquid are more effectively utilizing the map than Navi are. Like, just in terms of the heroes that are finding the farm. Mm -hmm. Because you have three people who are more or less even, or three pairs of people, I should say. Like, TC and Havost, pretty darn even on farm. And then you have Dendi and Quakefa. Quakefa's slightly ahead. And then you have um, the Darkseer and Funic, and Bulba is ahead of Funic. So, if you think about it, everyone's counterpart in Liquid, basically outside of one, they're all ahead. Yeah. Three, two Roshan kills, man. Yep, two Roshan. It's going to be three soon. It's going to be respawning pretty darn quick, I think. Do you yeah, think we, Dendi we, should go for a BKB? Sorry to interrupt you. No, no problem. Uh, we see a couple of crits coming out, which just want to mention it. Uh, the walls does make illusions that do crit. But it's so poor stats. Yeah, like, it, it's it's not going to kill anybody. Yeah. But it is a nice bit of extra damage, I suppose. I was actually a bit surprised that Dendi didn't go for the BKB, because... Looking at Liquid. That's what I'm thinking as for well. For the same reason that Koikva doesn't want to ball in against that team necessarily. Oh, oh, they're going to spot out Dendi. Although he does have backup this time. Demon's going to go ahead and blink away. Doesn't want to commit. They're missing TC though. So I don't know if Liquid really want to do this. Maybe they just want to bait out the fight so TC can get the tier 2 top. Maybe no, they're just they pushing decide. for space. They, they want to force somebody to TP top or something. And then they go for Roshan. It is spawning very, very soon now. There's been a lot of times in this game when there's no ward coverage at all. Well, what's that about? Well, one team has a book three, yeah. so it's pretty common that things would be dewarded. And I don't think Liquid want to place defensive wards, because in a lot of games, having aggressive wards is better for teams that want to consistently push, because you want to see them coming before they get there. Oh, and Funic has a gem as well. Yeah, and they, so there's a lot of ways to deward, basically, from both teams. Yeah. Everybody's running to defend bot. Top is going to actually just get killed by these Necro and how Nice Blast is going to slow things down a little bit. I think the tower is going to go down regardless. Roshan? That damage, man. Necro baby. They're gonna glyph. Yep. Fortified. Dendi's Radiance TPing up. The, the one nice thing about this, or one thing that could have been nice, good deny by Dendi by the way, is if Roshan had spawned during the time, like after Dendi TP'd, then maybe Liquid could have gotten their third Rosh. And with a cheese, like Quickfo with a 9 second BKB and a cheese and maybe even an Aegis, if they like really wanted to stack him, would be ridiculously hard for Navi to deal with. Yep. And I think being able to get picks like that, you either force buybacks at a Na'vi, or you just flat out go high ground with Mass Serpent Wards. If you're in that situation and he has a Cheese and an Aegis, do you even uh, Fiend's Grip as Bane? Because you know it's going to get stolen. And like, obviously, Storm Spirit is, Koifa is that best target to use it on if he's BKB. You mean... If he has a Cheese and a BKB on, does but Bane... But Grip is on Liquid's team. Yeah, yeah, but they have a Rubik. Oh, Liquid, or Quifa, excuse me, getting caught Ooh. out. Extremely low, gonna ball away. Not going to be able to burn the Aegis. Yeah. But that's huge though. I think forcing the Storm back like that, you could push your at least one or two wave back and yeah. start to contest Roshan. So even though they didn't get the kill, I think that was actually a big map advantage. So Shane, you were saying if Kuro manages to steal grip, who does he grip? No, do you even grip as way too, like with the risk of lo losing it? I think you still grip. Like, yeah, you have to. Yeah. You, okay. you can't not grip. I mean, the thing is, you either wait for Kuro to steal a spell, because maybe he steals Ball from Quakefa instead, and then or maybe he steals like Mass Serpent Words. Because for him, there's like three or four things that you would ideally want to steal. I would actually say that in some cases, Fiend's Grip is probably low on his priority. I think Mass Serpent Words are arguably better to steal for him. Okay. Sure, Grip is okay, because it's the easy go-to steal. It's like, yeah, sure, I can get this. I would actually prefer Hex over, Master, uh, over Grip. 
if I could get to pick. Yeah. But my that's spell. really hard to steal. Yeah. Shadows take us. It's like it's it's Navi that gets the map advantage. There is one wolf inside the pit, but there's also at the same time a gem. They gotta recognize that Roshan is not happening though. I don't know. I think they could do it. It's risky, but they could do it. Because right. I mean, Daedalus and Manta. And oh, just just the wolf scouts it. So it has to be a rapid response. They're not going back for it, so they're going for a top. It's going to die quite fast. I mean, they're not going to get top either. This kind of hurts Liquid, though, because I think not having an Aegis or Cheese for the next push means that Navi are going to have base defense advantage. And sooner or later, Denny's going to get to the point where he has so many damage items that they're just not going to be able to deal with a Sleight of Fist spam. Yeah. And then the game gets really hard for Liquid. So. I mean, basically, Liquid needs to win right now. Well, Dendi doesn't have a TP scroll. Oh. I mean, his TP canceled. Um, that canceled TP is actually bad. Okay, Ice Blast is going to come in, though. I don't know if they have Glyph. The Ice Blast is going to hit first person in. It's going to be Kuro. They want to try to go for him. He's going to get Orchid. Ghost Scepter's still on. Whew. They're just going to get the melee racks for free. Here comes the Sleight of Fist. Earth Splitter's going to be there as well. Hits on TC, but he's still got his ult on. Arrow going to be dodged. Here comes Dendi. He uh -huh. throws out another Sleight of Fist. Koikva quite low, but not going to be able to drop. And a huge wall by Boba actually gets a vacuum on three. He's the only one back here, though. Cheese. Popeye Havos now Koikva extremely low. Punch in the face, but the staple gun by Funnick going to get the kill on Koikva. Now Havos looking for Boba as well. Already then. They just get a free Rax? Yeah. It seemed like a very, very bad engagement until you realized TP got cancelled, Dendi didn't have TP, Ice Blast still Well, he intentionally cancelled it. Well, I mean, did you want to TP into that? Because there, there yeah. is Blink Hex and Blink Fing script, and, uh, you know, Boba being able to run interference to make sure that carries come out alive, or at least TC does. That's huge. Like though. I said, I think they needed to win right there. And when I say win, I don't mean win the game, but, like, get some something big. Because you gave That's up a win, and cheese, yeah. So, speaking of Aegis and Cheese, there is still Aegis on Dendi, who was already hitting very hard. I think in that team fight, even though Liquid won that or engagement and got the Raxus, they are they now know that they can't actually fight heads up. They will just lose the fight. Unless, you know, Na'Vi loses one or two heroes right from the get-go, I don't think TC and uh, Storm will be enough. That was really good awareness, because they saw them with this ward. They saw them all oh, running. Dead. If they get a puppy right now... Blink He's Hex? alone. Blink Hex? No, he blinks away. That was really weird. They saw the spirit mid. They knew Funic was there. I'm actually surprised they didn't go for that. Hmm. See, in my pub game, I wouldn't even see anything else. I would just see the target. You would just see the I kill. I would just get the kill. I would have won the game right there, man. Kill secured. Well, I don't know if killing puppy necessarily means second lane of high ground. No, no, it won't. But it, it's a nice. I mean, it's AI plus. Yeah, it's pretty big. So Dendy wants blood. He certainly does. And he's got a BKB now, so... Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't think he'll use it for his He's gonna run fight. into TP. Uh-oh. You can't man fight a Lycan, buddy. He's gonna hurt you oh, bad. No. BKB, TP. Alright, fair enough. Yeah. Do you think that? he needed to BKB there? I thought, I thought he could just run away. Well, he didn't have vision of anything else. Like, he actually has no wards in the map at all. So, I mean, in that circumstance, you just play it safe. Yeah. You just say, okay, well, I could potentially get arrowed, or I could get blink lifted or something, but... Wait, does Kuro even have a blink? I don't even know if he does. Nope, nope he doesn't. Go Scepter. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Looks like Liquid. <clears throat> Hex now on Quakefell as well. Are oh man, Liquid are actually in a really good position for this. Yeah. The only person they're missing is Demon, but they have two Necro books now. And they have Lycan Howl, so they can just massacre this tier too. Yeah, there's and a I don't Spirit think... in the mid lane though, but you can see that they're waiting for that Spirit to come back in. They're I don't think Na'Vi can afford to glyph this. They have to glyph their base, I think. Yeah, we saw earlier, I think they used a Glyph for a tier 2 or something like that. Yeah. And then Forces Deny, yeah, and they, did, yeah. they, they just lost the Rax because they Glyphed it. Now, Hex is also up on Storm Surge. I think this game is anybody's game, right? Yeah, I think, actually, it's about one of the more even games we've seen. Mm -hmm. The scary thing for Na'Vi is if Liquid get to your base. Because yeah. even with Sleight of Fist, sure, it's going to do really good damage to the supports, but you're going to have to worry about Mass Serpent Wards, two books, and Wall. you're going to have Howl. Ag Agonim's Mass Serpent yeah. Words. Yeah, Agonim's okay. Serpent Words. So that's like even worse. Shane and, and I have seen this before. Wait a minute. Yes, then he did. just spent all of his money. I mean, yeah, he has an Aegis still, but it's not going to be around for that much longer. Did he buy the Deadless? He bought bots. He bought bots. Because he okay. needs room for a TP, basically. Yeah. Or a spot that has a TP. Okay. I mean, I get why he buys it, but it's still dangerous. Maybe he believes that he's not going to die. I think that's obviously it. I mean, that's what you got to believe, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, has, go he has ages. Thinking that you're not going to die. So he, ha he has the one... The one death. Moonlight Shadow being used in the mid lane, but spotted out by Team Liquid. 
immediate uh, back in the base. This. Oh, I think Demon can go for this. Just put put the pressure on with the wards. I mean, pressure what? Mid. Well, if you buildings? push the lane in, if you, you push, push the lane mid. in through top, yeah, you yeah. can still drop the wards on mid. And it'll kill the terror. It's Agonims. Yeah, he's going for it. Blink at their shock. Demon Dota, man. Teleport in. It's going to be Puppy. He's the only one TPing back, though. This is Risky. so aggressive. He's going to go in for a Mass Serpent Wards. He's going to get the go. Terror as well. Yeah, he's going to get Puppy dead. He's going to oh get Frozen, God. though, so he's dead. Tier 4 taking some damage. Meanwhile, if you're Navi, you say no Mass Serpent Wards for the Siege, but they got to defend. Where is the TP coming out? Well, at least they have bots. The Micro. Wards are going to get farmed. Kill the Hots. Killing the tier 4s is actually pretty good though. Yeah. Like, if you can get the damage dealt to those, that means there's nothing in the base outside of just creep spawns that are going to defend. And uh, like after a while, like a couple minutes, your base is just going to get eaten alive you by creeps. It I mean, it give, definitely opens uh, the route for backdoor for Lycan. Lycan definitely one of the fastest backdoor there is. I don't know man, this game is weird. It it's just goes to show though. you like, some lineups have this at any point in the game, they can just Rax you. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the kind of lineup that Lick would have. It was like back in the day when people picked Lone Druid, like, every single game. And the lineup would look like it was really far behind, and then suddenly they would get to the base, and yeah. it's just like they Rax you in, like, four seconds. It's like, okay. Like, with Lone Tiny Druid is a well. hero. Yeah. Same thing. I think that's what they're playing for. Like, they're just going for the very, very safe, but oh. kind of, like, backdoorish play. Remember when Puppy was on the bottom lane and he was there by himself? They didn't go for the picks. Yeah. It seems like all they're going for is just this kind of rat dota, push all lanes, slowly whittle you down. Because they have the map control, and essentially with how fast they push and how mobile their heroes are, if they could secure the fourth Roshan, that could be a good way to play the game. And Liquid have managed to keep their side advantage, I guess you would call it, by just making sure they've gotten Roshan twice. And we argued kind of that it was bad for Liquid to give away the third Roshan, they but got in a reality, out of it, yeah. yeah, they they actually took an advantage from something that could be construed as a bad thing. So I think that they've actually played it relatively well. I mean, considering the fact that in the early game, Navi had a, a I would say, a, not a sizable lead, but they were ahead in terms of map control. They had slightly more experience in gold, and they were managing to basically force most of the engagements. But now, in my opinion, the shoe's on the other foot, and it's like Navi are basically reacting to the tempo that Liquid are placing, so. How do you change that? Like, what do you what do you do to change the tempo of the game? I think you need pickoffs. You ah. need to push the lanes out first. That's like, true. A pickoff is good, but what good does a pickoff do you if your lanes are right outside of your base? It's like you can't really force anything out of that. You have to make sure that you have, like, one hero dedicated in each lane. All three of the heroes basically need to be almost ungankable, which is hard to do because not all your heroes have escapes. Yeah. You basically have Marana and Ember, are two heroes who can go to a lane and say, okay, reliably, I won't die. I mean, even at that, though, there is a Storm on the other side with a Hex and an Orchid, so... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty scary. Like, you know, I think you need to be in packs of two. Like, you, you need to stay together. Funnick is going for a four staff defensively, I, I imagine. Here yeah. comes a, a little bit of foray into the enemy jungle. Funnick is pretty farmed. Yeah, he's got some gear. A hex on top of that would be pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah, ba creeps in base. Necro 3 oh, is hitting the oh. bottom tower. Oh, gonna Kuro, he's going to get gripped and shackled. Talk about the double hate here. Puppy not going to be able to get away either. Drops to an auto attack. Arrow oh. onto way to. He's going to be dropping next. Master from Wards dropped. Actually only going to oh, be doing hero damage. And the crit's coming out from Havos. He manages to get way to and demon. TC trying to push in bottom but he's not able to do much of anything. So it's basically they traded their supports. Yep. They also got a good bit of damage done on the tier 3 tower bottom. But every time a fight happens like that and you trade evenly, you gotta keep in mind that Navi is getting a ton of necro. Oh, Liquid. Oh. Er, quick though, why do I keep calling him Liquid? Just walks into an arrow and he drops a gem. Hmm. I think the gem was originally That's huge. Navi's, yeah. Like that is absolutely huge. Does but he again, have buyback? He does, he does have buyback. I, wanna, I just want to point something out. Even though Quakefo just got hit in the face by an arrow, and died, mm -hmm. every single wave is right outside Navi's base. Mm -hmm. Well, the top is already like that because of the, the racks. Bottom is because the wolves are constantly there. And it is just... This is sure just like Enfos, man. It's not even Dota anymore. It's just Enfos. It's just endless waves of creeps like right <laughs> outside of your base. And it's like, no offensive spells, please. I just want to hit things and get money. I mean, the way you look at it, you have Dark Sir who could push extremely safely. You drop Iron Shell and you back off to the jungle. You have Lycan with Wolves who essentially do the same thing. And uh, Storm Shirt, you know, you, you pop in, you drop a wave, and you walk back into the jungle. 
How how do you stop? How do you get those pick off and get the wave push back up? Are we gonna see Maelstrom as a item to go back onto if you're Mirana? I think Mjolnir is still really solid. I mean, there's what two heroes with BKBs, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily just for the team fight potential. It's just like you were saying. It's it's being Pushing able to push waves. out the lanes, right? So if you can't do that against Liquid, no matter how many times you pick, as long as they have money for buyback, you're not going to be able to end the game. Like, it's just going to be constant fighting against mass creeps, so... Unless actually, you pick um, them 10 times. I mean, the later the game minutes. goes, sure, you're going to have, like, longer and longer respawns, like when heroes get 25. Say somebody buys back, or they do, like, a dieback, right, where they die again, then, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a hard time, because I think it's, like, 120 seconds. Yeah. If you die back and you're level 25. Yep. So, I mean, that's a while, right? Like, that's enough to pretty much push out every single lane. Yeah. But I go for a cup of tea or something as well. I think Na'Vi are starting to run into the issue of we just don't have enough wave clear. I think there is one way they could do it is fight Liquid at the Roshan pit. Mm -hmm. If you sense they're doing Roshan, you just push out mid and go to the pit as quickly as possible. And if you kill, like, three or four there, you just basically win. Yeah, well, maybe. Depends on if they have buyback. Because the later the game goes, if... Like, if you're sitting at the Roshan pit, right? Like, you can just walk mid afterwards, cut the creep wave, like, like the next two that spawn, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you get there about the same time that your creeps will get there. Yep. So then you can just be like, yep, doesn't even matter if our other two lanes are pushed in, because top's dead anyway. And our tier four is still alive, even though it's at half. So you know you have a little bit of time. And since it's like 41 minutes in already, say the next Roshan spawns in, what, five, six minutes, something like that? You're going to have so much damage then on your cores. Still stuck. Yeah, it's actually spawning way sooner than that. Two minutes. Yeah, it's spawning in about two, so. I've actually deciphered this. It's taken, what, seven <clears> weeks <throat> of... It's really weird. They could have just put a number there. Yeah, they did have a, because they a clock before. And a half. How far did you see it? Yeah, but it's still, like, it could just be like a number. Yeah, but that's because someone explained it to me. But yeah. if I was to look at this... Yeah, I know. The outer one is eight minutes, and then the inner one is three. Yeah, but or if... Or two so or one. Or two, yeah, <laughs> whatever. But if, if someone, like, new to the game is looking at it, they're like, what the hell is that? I didn't learn hieroglyphics in school, man. Dude, they're gonna kill. No, never mind. Boba's got a blink as well. Search just ran out. He's gonna research. That will be it. Oh, bottom TC. He's just down here, man. He doesn't even care. He's got a BKB. He could actually just walk up there with BKB and just and go ham them, on the yeah. tower. Again, though, every time that these kind of fight changes or gets traded, now he's farming way more because they're farming necro books. Yeah. When I play against this, this is the style of Dota that actually infuriates me the most. Oh, I, yeah. I, I just panic. I don't know what to do. What? These games are the best games to play. No. And I'm talking about Navi side. You want to be Navi in this yeah, game? Yeah, man. You go to 79, you get big items. Just you win Dota. It is 79 no, minutes. Look at the terrors. Like, every time we look at the terrors, they have like 200, 300 less HP. Because he just keeps summoning the Necro Creeps, and eventually you're just going to lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I lo personally love playing on the back foot. Just like finding small nuances to come back in the game. You are weird. It, it's not a win if you don't. There's no challenge in it, you know. Yeah, but there's a challenge in like having a five-on-five -five epic team fight, and then there's a challenge of, oh god, how long can I weather the storm? Super exciting. Morale starts to get low on the team as well. When nah, this man. Lumi's having a great time. Everyone I'm else is a great like time. crying. Like, I'm, I've become the motivational speaker. Like, this is some Independence Day speech going on right now for me if I'm on Navi. So, alright, guys, we got this. Independence Day speech. Of all the speeches. Independence the Day. Yeah. We're gonna live on. Today is no longer. What, Except what, when you play Naga. Come? Fuck that. Like no Naga. Okay, that's that's the same no, style. No, see of Naga. Dota, it's like you even go to her and she's song. Like that's just like what? Okay, so that makes it harder. That should be like up your alley, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can't just say like there's a limit. Okay, now okay. it's too hard. Look at this bottom. What? Oh. You got to stop. Don't but even matter. Now, now what? It's just Yo, the lane. Get top. You throw out the an air splitter and you die. That's what you do. Ooh, the pick's Koika. gonna go the other way. He's got Hex. a hex, stops the TP. Kuro comes in with the lift. What is he okay. gonna be able to steal? Looks like the BKB is gonna be popped. They're just gonna kill Havost here. He's gonna get blink initiated by Demon as well. Koikfa, he wants to go for more. Kuro has ball stolen. He's gonna try to <laughs> go for the ball TP. Gets all the way into the river, actually. TC, though, going in bottom. Wants to go for the base. Dodges the Echo Stomp. Very nicely done. I'm surprised he's actually not going for more. I guess Havost did buy back. Dude, Wei Chu does have a grip, so they could definitely go for more. On the top lane, though, mid, top is getting pushed out. They could just go down mid. Meanwhile, Roshan has spawned, so if Liquid is aware of this, they definitely go into it. TC is just farming at tier one. This is panic stations. What's going on? Go into the Roshan pit. 
Scout it out. <laughs> Do you think this is mostly down to having Lycan on your team, or is it Shadow Shaman is a part of it as well? I think Storm's a huge part of it. The fact that he he is a split pusher and a pickoff machine at the same time. Yeah, we haven't really seen him split push that much though. Well, he's been farming alone a lot. That's yeah. basically the same thing as split okay. pushing. Like if you're sitting in a lane and spamming remnant on it, you're pushing what? it. It's it's Havol's just running into. He gets bashed. Okay. What is he up to? He's baiting. Koifa's oh, got the BKB in two seconds, so he can't go. He's in such a good spot, though. He can just come in from the back with ult and BKB and just kill the supports. And yeah. Demon can blink in as well. Oh, Koifa. Dendi, he gets pulled from the low ground. The Hex is going to be there. No BKB. Dendi's going to drop. Kuro, he's going to be forced to ball away. TC in the back with his BKB pop. Havos pops his own. TC comes in. Leap out of the pit here from Havos. Wants to throw out an arrow, but doesn't really succeed. Way too. Going to be dropping Earth Splitter inside of the pit as well. TC can't really do much. Looks like he's trying to finish Roshan. Storm Aegis got the Aegis. Picked up by Koikfa. TC going to go down, though. Puppy picking There's up the cheese. double. Someone needs the cheese. going to be a respawn. I think Dendi got it. No, he didn't get it. No. Who got the cheese? Havos picked it up. Okay, right. kuroki has got the ball, but essentially, if you look at who's dead, it's going to be five alive for Navi. It doesn't matter if you get the Aegis and cheese. Meanwhile, the creep wave is also pushed. If you look at top, it's slowly going into the base, but not quickly enough. I do believe Navi have the damage. Here comes Darkseid buyback. He essentially didn't use anything because he, get, he just got focused. So he has mech, he has Shivas, he's got the blink wall as well. So here comes initiation. He wants on Havos. Havos does not have buyback. They're going to burst everything onto you. Cheese. cheese gets used. Grip is going to be used on top. Ice Blast gets on, but He's already dead. Puppy on the run. Puppy's gonna go down to one more ball, but they don't have the mana. Puppy's gonna get, but the grip coming out from Kuroki. The nightmare is gonna cancel it. Koifa's on the run. Koifa pops a BKB. Koifa's also got buyback, so it doesn't really matter. No buyback coming out just yet. Meanwhile, there's a chase. They're gonna pick off Kuroki. There's a TP back. But look from at Funnic. bottom lane. Demon is pushing the racks with the wards. All right, he's got blink dagger as a way back out as well. I'm surprised he's not focusing on the range racks. No, he's not gonna go kill it. Go oh, home, it's so Lumi. Close. No, he, he baits out the uh. glyph, which is huge. Okay, I think I think what Koifa is waiting for is buyback. Havos on the creep died wave. back though. Havos is dead for three minutes. Yeah. He can't also, come back. also, uh, Dendi does not buy back anymore. He had to use it. Necro two just got picked up here by, uh, by Demon. Holy shit. Man, that was such an insane grip steal by Kuro too. It was so important at that point to have that spell. Because it was the only reason Koifa died. Like, but if Koifa was alive right now, which he would have lived... That's what I was saying. No, he can be alive. He can buy back if they want to go for the Gusto play. They're just know. not going for it. They just got the racks anyway, man. Necro, Book 3, and Wolves. Pretty good units, man. That's what I was saying, though. Like, should he even use the Fiend's Grip? I don't know. I mean, the Fiend's Grip did result in killing Havos. Yeah. So... Okay. Because right after the Hex wore off, he cheesed. And he was at 100% when the Fiend's Grip, like, first got on him. But I still think it's worth it. Burn. That is a lot of stuff on the courier, man. Did he just finish? Did he just oh, finish two items. Who? No, he just finished the hex. Okay. Still, that's big hex. They lost two racks, though. I mean, now they're they're down their melee racks bottom. I guess the range racks is still alive. Four. Top is completely dead, and they lost the top tier four tower. So, Navi are basically uh, they're in rough shape, man. Yeah, I mean, Liquid, if you look at them, eventually they will have three Necro 3s, Master Boom Wards with Axe, and then Wolves. It's kind of filthy. <laughs> it is, is extremely filthy. There's a lot of Necro books, a lot of wards, a lot of damage. Yeah, Slide of Fist, though. If you're Demon here, do you just save up for Boots of Travel? Well, he wants to finish his Necro 3. I don't think he cares about Boots of Travel. I think you go Refresher. Cause it, yeah, his next inventory spot, he's still going to have room for TPs. unless Because he can sell the smoke. He has two consumable inventory spots right now. Mm -hmm. So basically, he can always have a TP and finish Book 3 and have a Refresher. And Look never at these have Necro creeps upon... <laughs> How did it get up there? <laughs> they climbed. They I guess he oh, was they get just facing split? the cliff. Yeah. Oh. No. no, he was facing the cliff. If they, if they got Earth Splitter, they would have taken damage. <laughs> it's just like farming these. They're 200 gold apiece, man. Yeah, that's it's a lot of money. Except Kuroki's gonna die to him if he tries to farm. Worth Demon it, man. blinked up there and then uh, TP'd out. Okay, meanwhile, there's just Ice Blast going to the bottom portion of the map constantly. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm trying to. They were scouting out Demon. Like he. Oh, they because threw he's an always ice in the trees? Yeah. Because he's basically been sitting in lanes, like waiting to go in. Like, just keeping the lane push, and as soon as a fight happens somewhere else, he just uses that to his advantage. That's what the smoke's for. Yeah, and, and also Na'Vi, like, they have to take fights outside of their base. That's yeah. the only way they can get back into the game. Because if they're just constantly on defense, 
and they have two lanes constantly pushing in no matter what, it's way too hard to try to get to Liquid's base that way. There's still a tier two safe lane for Liquid. So basically they can push mid and they can push bottom, but they can never push top unless they like completely team wipe Liquid. Yeah, and they don't have a lineup that could basically say, hey, I'm going to kill your Rax in two seconds. So yeah. even if they win, they have to win so many more team fights. Navi is very, very far behind. So let's just say that, let's pretend that Liquid wins this game eventually through attrition. What would you say the turning point for this game was? That Roshan where they gave up the Aegis and Cheese yeah, and just got the Rex? When they got Going the Rex down against Liquid's team is game changing. Because not only do you have heroes who can be mobile, like a Blink Shadow Shaman, TC with a BKB, who more or less is unkillable by Na'Vi, unless they manage to jump him with like a Hex or something, which Funic didn't have before. They're going for a button, by the way. Yeah. They're just going in. I mean, the range Rex doesn't mean much. Like, yeah, but it's more pressure. Right? Yeah, they're going top. Uh, through are the they, mid? Are they going mid? For the tier threes? The wave is actually pretty close to the base in all lanes. So this is kind of the Dude, problem. Hoyfight's playing the base. He's going to get hexed. I mean, meanwhile, Holy it's going to through the mid lane. Master Burn Ward's going to get dropped. Look at tier three. It's dropping so fast. Now the ward's going to go for the melee racks. You can see that TC's going for the bot racks as well. It doesn't even matter if the storm survives or not. The racks are man. going yeah. down. That's mega creeps. GG. All right, now you start playing Dota, guys. All right, that's Lumi it. time. Yep. This is Lumi's wheelhouse. All right, what's your game plan? Maelstrom on everybody. <laughs> okay. I mean, really, you have to go all in. That's the only way. Yeah. yeah. Like, you either just say, okay, we lost, or you go all in. Same thing. What is the career? Is there a rapier? Here? No, it's just a Daedalus. I was there just checking the career. I mean, even with a rapier, do you do enough damage to the creep wave to push it out? No, it's time for like that 55 minute Battle Fury. Battle Fury to me is like more effective than Rapier at this point in the game. Well, if we're clear. talking in terms of sheer damage to clumped up units, Battle Fury is the best item. Yeah. Especially against Dark Seer. I'm kind of surprised Dandy didn't go for it in this game. I think the idea was the Natural Order and the Desolator have really good synergy. Yeah, yeah, it does, of course. But you also have to consider that Navi were really far ahead. And when you're ahead, Desolator is actually a very strong item because not a lot of heroes have a lot of armor mm -hmm. that early on in the game. So I get why he would go that. But I also think that not having a BKB makes him very susceptible to Liquid's lineup once they start getting Blink Daggers, which Demon had at, what, like oh. 20 minutes? On next trap, Ice Blast is going to come in. Coming down to about half HP. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, being Megid, I don't really... Outside of taking, like, one crazy good fight and just going I mean, completely nuts. Look at, look at Na'Vi. They're down to the mid lane right now. Dendi has a bot, so he could join in. But meanwhile, they're going to go for Funic. Funic does have bots, so he could also join me. But even if you push the base, yeah, Liquid push like five times faster. Yeah. So basically what they need to do, Navi, is force TPs back and win a fight in their base. I and then win a they fight when they back, back, though. Like, look at these Necro They babies. almost have a naked throne. Like, even in the case Yo. they base raise, well, they're going to go for it. Master Open Ward's dropped. Funny oh. goes in, gets Hex, though. Earth Splitter going to do a little bit of damage, but it's not quite enough. Dendi throwing out the Sleight of Fist, lift onto Demon as well, but it's just not enough, man. They, they all need to go care. back, and Puppy even dies as well. Like, Quakefa manages to pick him off in the meantime, and that's probably going to be your GG right there. Team Liquid wins a game against Na'Vi. And we just talked about how important this match for Na'Vi is for the top six race. Yeah. That well, was a pretty well played game. That was filthy. They need to go have a shower. <laughs> they got one more game coming up though. <laughs> I mean, the way that Liquid played it, they had to play it that way. Yeah, it was really smart. Like given the fact that the laning phase didn't go amazingly for them, Dendi started off pretty strong. It's not necessarily that his game fell off, it's just that the hero has limitations. Like when you go into a lineup that's just going to consistently be back during your base, back during your base all the time, you need to be able to have two lanes pushed out constantly. Yeah. I think talking about how the late game was, maybe it's not fair because it was never meant to be played like that. I just want to focus on that one fight where Navi chose to go for Roshan and Team Liquid chose to force down top. When the Roshan was finished, I think Team Liquid was at the tier two. So I'm surprised it actually worked out that way. They saw, they had a ward and they saw that Dandy didn't have a TP. Yeah, but we can talk about this a little bit later. Let's uh, go back for a quick commercial break. Team Liquid will triumph over Navi, surprisingly, I think to a lot of us. I think Navi, a lot of people expected Navi come through, but a well-played game for Team Liquid. We're going to see Team Liquid again. They're going to be playing against Virtus Pro, if I... Yep, yep. Leap, leap. yep. so that should be a very exciting match. We're going to be back and let's see if Team Liquid can continue to shriek mm. when it doesn't matter. Whoa.